Okay, so in last class, I have started about overloading few of the operators. So I have discussed that uh, we have two kinds of operators which we can overload. One is unary operator and another is binary operators. Unary operator can be increment and decrement operators. It can be a logical operator, logical knot, and it can be a um, sign operator. So uh, let's start with increment and decrement operator. Let's consider the distance class, which we have considered. So in distance class, we have two data members, uh, feet and inches. If we have two objects and of D1 and D2, so we can write D2 equals to plus plus D1 as we can use the increment and decrement operator with the primitive data types. So if you write plus plus D1, it will increase the value of fit variable. F inches will remain same and the value will be assigned to D2. So D2 will get the incremented data, what D1 has and value of D1 will also get incremented. If you write d2 equals to plus uh, d2 equals to d1 plus plus, it is a post-it uh, expression. In this case, the value, the initial value of d1 will be stored in d2, and then the value of d1 will get incremented. So that is post-it uh, post expression. So let's take one example to demonstrate this. So here we have a distance class. It has two data members, integer feet and four inches. We have dictated two constructors, a zero argument constructor and parameterized constructor to initialize the values. In main function, we have created D1 and D2, two objects. Uh, so initial value is not required. So suppose the object D1 has the initial value 11 as feet and 10.2 for inches. What we want, we want to assign value in D2 with plus plus D1. As we know that in primitive data types, we can use increment and decrement operator, but for user defined data types, to use such kind of operator, we must have to overload this. So we require an operator overloading function. So here, this one is the operator function. The name of the function is operator. Return type is distance. Plus plus is the operator symbol. We are creating an object of distance class by calling a constructor. This constructor will create a nameless object with the value plus plus i fit. That means fit value will be incremented and f inches will remain same. 
and the uh, newly created nameless object will be returned and that will be assigned in D2. So, in this case, in main program, we have we have created uh, an object D1 and initialize the values with the, uh, with 11 and 10.2. D2 is another object. Value of D2 is assigned by incrementing value of D1 using prefix increment operator. This is a function to print the value of the data members. Here is the operator overloading function, and these are constructors. So you can see that the object D1 has the value this and okay, one more thing. The so first one is the value of D1 before increment operator is applied and here it is after the application of operators. So now you can see that after this operator, this expression is evaluated. The value of D1 and D2 are both incremented. Inches value remains same, but the feed value has been incremented. So this is known as operator overloading for increment and decrement operator. Uh, and here is the example of prefix operator. Now suppose, okay. Uh, so for the operation, you know that. Hello. So at first, the op uh, the compiler will convert this operation as d1 equals to d2 dot am i audible yes sir yes sir yes sir so this expression will be converted into d1 equals to d2 dot operator plus plus since it is a unary operator the object will be passed implicitly. If we use a uh, friend function, then one argument must be passed. No object will be passed implicitly. We must have to pass them explicitly. Now suppose, if we consider the post uh, postfix expression, d2 plus plus, in this case, again, the compiler will convert this operation as d2 dot, operator plus plus because the name of the operator is plus plus in both the cases. So for prefix and postfix expression, 
the compiler conversion will remain same. So it won't work. To solve this problem, the compiler distinguishes between these two operations by adding a dummy variable or type integer. So if it is a postfix expression, an integer value will be passed to the operator overloading function. This integer is just a dummy variable. It doesn't have any role. It is used just to distinguish between these two evaluation. If suppose in, in our program like this, we have defined our prefix operator overloading, but we do not have any operator overloading function for postfix operation. In that case, in that case, compiler will first try to evaluate this expression. If there is no match is found, like in our case, then a warning will be generated. But your program will execute with the with this defined expression. But if you have an overloaded operated function for the postfix expression also, then there won't be any error and warning, and the match will get uh, will be found. For example, now we are creating another object d3. D3 equals to D1 plus plus. See what's the output now. Here we are not having any warning, but the error that we haven't defined any postfix operation. So here is an error because the compiler will send an integer variable. So we, we have to define this. So here is the another overloaded operator overloading function. To take the dummy variable, we need to declare an integer variable, but name of the variable is not required. This will be changed to plus plus feet and inches. So D1, uh, the first output is for the D1, where the initial value is 11, and then 10.2 for inches. First D2 gets the value by incrementing D1. So the value of D1 will be uh, D1 will be 12. Sorry, what is D1 is incremented two times, three times. Okay, let's okay, hide the things. Okay, so value of D one is in value of D one is incremented by the post uh, increment operator. But the value of D3 is the initial value of D1. I think uh, this is clear to you. Any doubt over this uh, operation? So similarly, we can also define a postfix and prefix decrement operation.
Take this. Next, we will take up the unity minus operation. Suppose we have a class. So, this one is the example of a unary minus operator overloading where we have a class named A which have a data member X. So, if you create an object of class A like A1 with some value like A1 5. So in that case, if you write C out or C minus A1, this operator is applied, then the value of X, which is the member of A1 object, it will be it will become minus 5. So that's the code for overloading unary minus operator. So other things we've been seeing. Now uh, let's move to a binary operator overloading. In binary, in binary operator overloading, we will have two objects and we will apply binary operators. Like here, we have an plus operator, which will um, operate on two operands, that is D1 and D2. D1 and D2 are the objects of any class. In our case, it will be a object of distance class. Now, the compiler will first convert this as operator plus the first operand d1 will be used to call this operator overloading function and the object d2 will be passed as an argument. If you are considering a member operator function, if you are using a friend function, then both D1 and D2 will be passed as arguments. Okay, so here is, uh, we have an example of a distance class where we have written a function which will add these two objects. So distance d1 and distance d2 are passed. It will calculate the summations. So if you do not use operator overloading functions, then you must have to call the add function like this, add d1 comma d2. We want to change this expressions like this.
that means that that means we need to define an operator overloading function which will return an object of type distance let me see Okay, so here I have included an operator overloading function for the plus operator. The first operand in, uh, for this expression, the D1 is the first operand which will be invoked by the compiler to call the function add, I mean, it's operator overloaded function operator plus, and D2 will be passed as an argument. D1 will be passed implicitly. So here we have a single argument which is of type distance. So DD1 will store the value of the second operand that is D2. We do not want to change the value uh, value of the argument DD1. So it is made constant. This function is also made as constant so that from within this uh, uh, body of the function, we do not manipulate, we do not change the value of any object. So here, we are calling a constructor which will include, which will add the value of the D1 object, fit uh, data member of the D1 object and DD1.fit 
and it will add the inches value of both the object d1 and d2. A nameless object will be created and that will be written. So d3 uh, will get the value of the data uh, of the addition of the data members of d1 and d2. So at first we have called get distance method to get the values of d1 and d2 object. And then after the uh, after the expression, we have printed the value of d3 object. So first line is for D1, second one is for D2, and third object D3 gets the value from, by adding D1 and D2. Any question? No. Okay, so similarly, we can have an operator minus function. So with the help of relational operators, we can apply operations like D1 greater than D2 or D1 less than D2 and like that. So again, in this case, the compiler will first interpret this expression as D1 dot operator the symbol greater than and second argument will be passed as an operator. So for this, uh, to overload this expression, uh, let me create an operator like this enumerator. So what we will have in this case, the return type will be Boolean. So any logical operator will return a Boolean uh, value like true or false. So return type is bool, which I have enumerated here. The return operator symbol now 
now we have to consider if d1 dot feet into 12 is inches that means the value of feet and inches are converted into inches for d1 operator uh, d1 object if it is greater than the object passed that is d d1 Two then we will return true is written false. So in this case, D1 is 12 uh, and 3.3 uh, and 5 and 2.1. Uh, so in this case, D1 is greater than D2, which we received by overloading greater than operator. So similarly, you can also overload uh, other relational operators also. Do you have any question? Okay, I, I would like to take a five minute break and after that I will continue.